great day. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the people that came out in a perfect day to be outside, Lord, but they took the time to come to church. Let us be blessed and anointed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. All right, you can be seated. Thank you. Let's give the worship team a hand. Amen. Yep, yep. God is good. Amen. Must have had a bad day today, huh? God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. And the devil's bad. All the time. And all the time. The devil's bad. He's bad the bone. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for a beautiful day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I was in Florida this morning. Flew into uh, Atlanta and then, drove, and then flew into Minneapolis and then drove down here. So I've been in four states plus uh, the fifth state, the state of confusion. Turn your Bible to Psalm 51. Psalm 51. I have had the opportunity, bless God, to preach over 14,000 times. Wow. And I have, but I've, I don't think I've ever preached on this topic tonight and the scriptures. So you get a brand new one tonight. It's fresh out of the Holy Spirit oven. Amen. And it's found in Psalm 51, one of the most uh, popular psalms. I've never preached on it. Uh, but I want to encourage you to take out a piece of paper and pen to take notes. And let me ask you a question tonight. How many here have ever messed up? Raise your hand. How many here have sinned at least once? Since this afternoon. <laughs> we blow it. Well, I know we're forgiven. I know that. But you know what? I thought, yeah, I just say I'm sorry and we go on. But you know what? It, it's, it's a little bit deeper than that. And many times we make bad decisions based on false information. And no matter who you are, you're going to blow it in life. David was a king, and David was a prophet. David wrote the Bible, and David sinned. And we've sinned, we're going to sin, it's an excuse to sin, but on the other hand, when we do, what do we do? And so I want to talk about that tonight. Now that you say, well, I know what, God will forgive me, I can do what I want. No, 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 no. It means this, when you do blow it, there is a solution. So I'm going to walk through that tonight. I want to encourage you to take out a piece of paper and pen, or just take your Bible, underline these verses. Point number one is this, have mercy on me, O God. Have mercy on me. Not just have mercy on my neighbor. How many here need a little mercy? Say, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. When I was four years old, my first memory in life was I had this really crabby neighbor when I was four. I still remember her today. Her name was Marcy. And she was really grumpy, lived next door. And we went to a certain denomination, I'm not going to tell you which one. <laughs> and every week, three times a week, we'd pray, Lord have mercy. I said, Amen, take mercy. Lord have mercy. Right? And it's true other people need mercy, but you know what? You need mercy. I don't know I need mercy. No, we, seriously. The best we can be, we need mercy. I know that. I, I, this is like something you've never heard before. Let me just reinforce. You need mercy. Yes. If you say you have no sin, you're deceived. Right. Even when I'm at my best, I could be at my worst. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. You ever had like, oh, I'm doing really good now. Wham! Sure. Oh, I need to come back and repent. Mm -hmm. So not just have mercy on them, have mercy on me. Uh, one of the things I loved about Joyce Meyer, first time ever in my ministry, I heard somebody preach against their own sins and say, here's my fault. I went, you can't do that in the ministry. You, in fact, I was told at cemetery, uh, some, uh, seminary, <laughs> don't get close to people in your church. They'll see your flaws and won't respect you. Well, Jesus didn't have that method of teaching, did he? No, he, didn't. he lived with them for three years. He saw their flaws and still believed in them. So let me ask you this. What color are sheep mostly? Have you ever worked a sheep? There they go. They're gray. They're white from a distance. But the closer you get, the dirtier they are. They're filthy dirty. Do you know why you have to shear a sheep? Not just to get the wool to sell. If you didn't shear a sheep, they die because they die from their own filth. Sheep have no ability to clean themselves. And they will die from their own filth. Hey, John, your friend called how to get here. Hopefully they found the place. Your, your friend called, so maybe you want to make sure that they're coming. I talked to him, we talked to him on the phone to give him directions, but we, we don't see him here yet. So, yeah, thanks, John. So, um, sheep are dirty. Sheep smell. Sheep bite each other. They have a bad day. They're not sheepish either. The point is, is, is that sheep need to be sheared 
They need to be cleansed. If they get close to running water, they'll drown. Friends, we need, we're all like sheep gone astray. See, and one of the reasons why the world doesn't like us is they think that we think we're way better than them. And on one hand, we are, we are better through the blood of Jesus. On the other hand, we're still sheep. And you start dissing people and looking down at people, guess what? They're not going to listen to you. They want nothing to do. Have mercy on me. Before I can pray for mercy for them, God give them mercy. I need mercy. Lord, have mercy for me. I need it. How many here need a little mercy today? How many here get irritated by people? One pastor said, I love the ministry. It's the people I don't like. So there's a guy that lived in my home. We've had over 200 people live in our home. Now we have an Airbnb. Now it's probably up to three or 400. And there's a guy that lived in my home. This guy was a perfect advertisement on why you don't drink or take drugs. He's like 10 years younger, and he looked like he was 20 years older. Great advertisement. Don't ever do drugs. Look at this guy right here. And he's going to spot me. I remember following him down the steps and went, look at that. That's a disgrace of a human. Look, I'm 10 years older. He walks like, he walks like my dad. I mean, and I did the bench, and I pulled off about 400 pounds, and I cracked my neck. I was in pain for about two, three months. I'm too cheap to go to the doctor. Right? <laughs> Got a great insurance plan from Obama. God bless you, 100000 deductible. <laughs> and and I, I hurt my neck. And I didn't even bother praying about it because I knew I deserved it. So when I got better, about a year later, I'm following the same guy down the steps to spot me. going like, look at it. Nope, I'm not going down there. That neck hurt a lot. Okay. <laughs> I might not be fast, but I'm not that much of a slow learner. So I'm trying to say is this. You need mercy. So some sins are obvious. Like, oh, look at that sin. Look at that sin. But there's other sins nobody can see, but God sees. Yes. So thank God we are a little weak, because then we don't judge people, because that's a sin too. Yes. Have mercy on moi, on me. That's point number one. Point number two is this. Have mercy on me because I'm really a great guy. Ooh, wrong translation. That's the Book of Mormon. According to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion. That's point number two. I'm not asking God to give me mercy because I deserve it. I'm asking God to give me forgiveness because he loves to forgive. How many parents here have children? Well, that's a parent. How many have your children like really mess up? Like mess up? Like unbelievable? Like that's your kid, not mine. Right? And... Oh my gosh, I can't believe that kid did that. But how many don't say, you know, you messed up. Change your name. Hmm. Yeah. I'm only three. I know. You should have dirtied your diaper. Well, it depends. Anyway. Ah, sick. But the point I'm trying to make is this. God, he forgives us because he is compassionate. Yes. They already know that. I know you know it. I'm reminding myself. Because I think, well, maybe I, if I really work hard, because I need to work hard, I try not to sin. I get extra compassion because I'm really trying hard. No. Write this down. It's his character to forgive. Yes. It's his character to be compassionate. It's, it's really who he is. He's a, he's a loving father. Yes, there's discipline. How many have been spanked by the Lord? Say, uh-huh. And it's, it hurts. Oh, yeah. It can hurt. Right? But in his being is compassion. It's interesting. It says in... The book of Hebrews, uh, chapter, I think it's chapter 4, uh, verse 12, that when we approach him, uh, we approach the throne of grace for mercy, but it says, approach him boldly yes. for mercy. Yes. That is the most contrary. It's like, it didn't say approach him groveling. Approach him with boldness. God, I'm bold. I, I believe in your mercy. Let's write this down. It's really a compliment. In God, I'm getting this great revelation to recognize how loving and merciful He is. Wow. I can come boldly. I have messed up. I don't have to be ashamed. Now, write this down. Your circle of people may condemn you. Hello, guys. Your circle of people may criticize you. Your, cir your circle of people may diss you. But write this down. We don't go by people's mercy. We go by who? God. I can't hear you. God. I can't hear you. God. God's mercy. Right? Not people's mercy. 
How many of you have ever messed up and then people never talk to you again? And you call them up and say, did I, did I do something wrong? Am I ugly? Do I have bad breath? Did I... You never call me. Or ever had this, I forgive you, but I never want to talk to you again. What the heaven is that all about? How many here want God's mercy? Amen? Amen? Because I can't, I can't trust people's mercy. People are weird. People are awesome. People are weird. How many here can do weird? How many fit in the weird category? <laughs> you look at really weird people and go, I'm one of those. Seriously. I'm a schizophrenic and so am I. <laughs> and I, I don't know Des Moines too much. James, do you guys have a zoo here? Okay. So in Minnesota, we have this really cool zoo. We have two of them, but we have this really cool zoo. And what happened, first time ever, we bought a polar bear in from the North Pole and a polar bear in from the South Pole and had a baby. First time ever, it's bipolar. Did you get the punchline? Who said that? I thought you were going to go home. Hey? Drummer boy, umpa pumpa um um. Rumpa um um. Okay, that's right. You, you got the first point out. That's enough. <laughs> Thank you, too. We appreciate your comment. Not really. Okay. Bro, I'm going to pray for you. So in about three or four people kind of gather around this guy. Jump up here. And we're going to pray for him. And uh, three or four guys, jump up here. And come up here. Here we go. Amen. They make an unbelievably good-looking couple. How long have you been dating? She get married. And... Sorry, sorry, Dad, like, I'm going to kill you. No. <laughs> Amen. And Father God, I pray for this man to be a man of hard work, diligence, integrity. You know when you marry a pretty girl? They're expensive. Ah, it doesn't matter. They're girls. They're all expensive. So pray for him to be good at his job. Go the extra mile. Not live for money, but live to give. Live to be a blessing. God, I pray for this man to run a business someday. I pray this man to be an impact to young people. He could be a youth pastor. And bring kids to God in Jesus' name. One disadvantage of dating a pretty girl for two years. Oh my gosh. You can only imagine the temptations. Oh, must be hard, huh? You sweating? I'd be sweating. I'm sweating for you. <laughs> That's why all of us guys got married. <laughs> we all had the same temptation. It's like, God, I just pray. Help him, Father God, at the right time to be your will. Tie the knot. God, if there's weaknesses in his character, you're going to deal with him. Give him mentors. Godly men. Pastors. Leaders. To speak in his life. Not control him. Not boss him around, but speak life into him. Your destiny you have is an incredible destiny. When it's time to worship, get off your booty and stand up with those hands in the air unless you're handicapped. Are you handicapped? You look handicapped during the worship. Like, that poor, that poor guy, he can't even lift his arms in the air. Oh my gosh, he probably has a wheelchair somewhere. Oh, dude, you got healed. Amazing. Thanks, James. Your prayers worked. Wow, I thought he was handicapped. Now he's raising God. From now on, the kids are watching how you praise God, not us old people. In Jesus' name, amen. Is that good? Good stuff, man. You're welcome. Give me a hand, amen. What a, give me a hand. I, I really, I think it'd be cool for you to go take a week off with someone, travel with a traveling speaker, um, take a week off, work with a pastor full-time, because there's a call of God in your life, amen. It's exciting. You're fired up, man. Careful of the temptations, man. Yeah. Could be a, could be a singing group, temptations. Okay, all right. Uh, point number three. Wash away all my sin and cleanse me from my sin. Remember, years ago I bailed hay. Hey, hey, hey. The most hey. filthy, hey, hey, The most filthy job. I was out in misery. It was like 99 degrees and 99% humidity and no wind. It's the last time I ever drank a beer. I got sick. <laughs> 19... And I'm just sweating. I've got you know, hay in me. And I was black is beautiful, baby. I was black. And uh, I took a shower. Oh, my gosh, that feel good. Yeah. Amen. And I, I, I was night, you know, I was, I was 17. And I didn't clean up the shower afterwards. I was in somebody else's house. And they were not a happy camper. <laughs> I still remember her being mad at me. She was even my mother. Like, I thought it was my mother who could yell at me. She had the gift of motherhood. 
my mama could yell so loud Helen Keller could hear. Right? And I still remember to this day, a long time ago, 40 years ago, it's like water coming out and like, like rivers of cleanliness. And the whole bottom part of the shower was black, 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 black. You know, and it felt good. How many can say amen? And God says, I want to cleanse you. Yeah. Ever do something horrible? They're like, I'm a loser. Loser! Right? God, how can you even forgive me? He said, That's a good question. No. Um, and then all of a sudden, you repented and you felt better. Amen. You know, like, you still love me after that? Yeah. You ever, like, mess up and have to preach? <laughs> Ah! Wait, twice a week, right? <laughs> you ever had a fight with your spouse before the church service? Yeah. yeah. You gotta go up there and lead worship? Hallelujah. Hypocrite, hypocrite, hypocrite. <laughs> right? No. Uh, and it's such a great feeling to be cleansed. Yes. So write this down. Obviously, he knows we need to be cleansed, or he wouldn't have this in the Bible. See? He's a compassionate, loving God. That's not an excuse to sin. But he wants to wash you clean. Now, how many are glad they invented body wash? How many hated the old-fashioned soap? Like, this thing's been here for two and a half years. <laughs> wow. Who used the soap before I got it? So now, you ever feel like you have to wash the soap bar after somebody else used it? Like, what good does this do? Why do you have to use a new towel every day? Weren't you already clean? something to think about. I don't know. Somebody came up with body wash. God bless them, and God bless America. And you have to scoop that on that wash rag and washers. Then some people use those those goofy looking, spongy looking... What are those things? Lupus. The what? Lupus. That sounds like a disease. Lupus? And like, do you guys like ever like wash them? Or they just sit in the shower for like three years? I think about things like that. I drive too much. Worse than that for sharing. Thanks for sharing. And uh, <laughs> this is a community sermon. It's going real well. Okay. <laughs> but all of a sudden your friends go, hallelujah. And all your family go, hallelujah. <laughs> you are cleansed. You heard somebody say, you clean up good. What does that mean? <laughs> what are we trying to say? Yeah, ever read into things? Try not to. <laughs> right? Ever give your wife a compliment? She about slaps you. Did you not take that right? <laughs> Let's not go there. Uh, stay positive. So, all I can say is this. Write this down in your notes. Praise God, we're cleansed. You know, learn to forgive because one day you're going to need it. Hello, can't hear you. There's people done things wrong. And, 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 and all of a sudden they show up again at a meeting like, crud, I thought they got raptured. <laughs> So if you ever Google my name, have you ever Googled Tom Stammen? No, I'm sure you don't. I Google my name. And the first four things are really good. Impact Ministries, Facebook, mm-hmm. Feeding Orphans. Number five, not so good. I made pissedoff.com. <laughs> oh, yeah. Piss, you, are you pissedoff.com yet, Pastor Nate? You're not going to be great until you get on pissedoff.com. It is a mark of anointing. <laughs> this guy about 10 years ago went on and said, Tom Stammen ripped me off. Tom Stammen is a false prophet. Blah, 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 blah. Well, of course, I, got, I knew his name. He was one of our ministers. And he's a little bit, you know, he's got a few emotional problems, a few. And but one day God got a hold of his heart and he repented. Amen. I'm really sorry for writing that about you. I was wrong. I want to get reordained because nobody would probably ever ordain the guy. <laughs> so he got reordained. He's, he's still on pissedoff.com because he puts positive things on me and they delete it. They only want negative stuff. So I'm going to the first CD when you get home tonight. I'm going on pissedoff.com and look up Tom. I, I just did. <laughs> <laughs> it is number five. You need some foster care. Was it number five? It, yeah, it's from 2011. Though. Yeah, so it's dating. Yeah. Still number five, though, because everybody looks it up like, oh, what do we do? You know, right? And... Uh, and, and then, or, or, and then, so he asked me to read it weird day, and he shows up at one of my meetings, and I'm dying to introduce him. Here's the guy that made me famous on pissedoff.com. Good to see you, brother. Welcome to the service. I forgive you, jerk. No, anyway, 
And, but he's a little bit back and forth. And then about three months ago, he came and brought his daughter. And God just rocked her in a prophetic word. She's probably about 11. And she's touched. She says, my daughter's been radically changed by you. But she says, here it is. This guy made me famous on pissedoff.com. And his daughter is radically rocked in a meeting. It changed her life. She's called in the ministry. She says, I love Jesus more than ever before. It's the best experience she's had with God from a dad who got me on pissedoff.com. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Right? So write this down. Your best friends can become your worst enemies. And your worst enemies can become your best friends. Amen. Friends, we've got to stop fighting each other and start fighting the devil. I'm going to say this. This is very important. Write this down. The Jesus in me should always get along with the Jesus in you. Amen. If there is a conflict, one of us isn't filled with, filled with Jesus. You can't be full of God and me full of God and not get along. That is impossible. Amen. So if we're not getting along, one or both of us is wrong. And whoever won't reconcile is the wrong one. If the person says, look, let's try to work it out, and you don't want to, and there's people out there that are hard to forgive. How many can say that? Yeah. Will you forgive me? <laughs> Let me give you the five-fold ministry, then I'll forgive you. <laughs> Get the punchline of my joke, dude. <laughs> you what you did to me. Will you forgive me? <laughs> sure. Because a little, God put a little leverage on us. He so if you don't forgive them, I can't for... Ah, just skip that scripture. Now, it's easy to forgive unbelievers because we have, we know they ain't going to do nothing good. It's harder to forgive a brother. I can't hear you. Because you're going to get offended. Write this down. Wherever two or three are gathered together, there's a problem. Yep. It's only a matter of time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking from you. <laughs> we need mercy. Say mercy. 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 So look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. neighbor. I forgive you. Right? So, I'm impressed. Um, there's a person here, I can tell you who the person is. And their marriage didn't quite work out, but they're still talking to each other. And I just think that the school that they still love each other, even though they're not together, and you know, the person knows who they are that's here. And I, I, I'm not, I admire that. I, I'm impressed. You know, as a body of Christ, we need to learn to love each other. I can say that. Amen. If we can't love each other, we can't love the world. Can't hear you. Amen. Amen. I gotta pray for your wife there. She's gifted, anointed, awesome. Stand right here, and uh, I said, for sure, ladies. Maybe a couple guys want to stand by. Her. Guys can come too, but especially the ladies. No pressure. Get over here. All right, get up now. No, just kidding. And um, I am thrilled for the day for your church to start writing some of their own songs, including you. I'm thrilled for the day that you two, you two work together as a team, as opposite as you two can be. Like, what in the heck brought you together? <laughs> and yet they work together and they love God together. I pray God you stir up the gifts of the Spirit. I'm praying for a ministry, not just here, but I see you're doing traveling someday, and God's going to give you an opportunity to be able to sing. You need to have a little CD. You pass on, hey, I'd like to come sing at your wedding. Um, I, I can see you singing at people's funerals. I see you as an ordained minister. Mm. Maybe all you do is funerals and weddings, because pastors don't like doing weddings, right? And, but always getting a chance to preach the gospel. Yes. God, I see her like adopting a child. Maybe it's a stepchild, stepgrandchild, a, a neighbor's kid that doesn't feel loved. But you're going to make that child feel extra loved and special. How many things would be cool for her to write songs for people? Take a psalm and put music to that song and say, here's a prophetic song for you. Hardly anybody has that gift, but you have that gift. So stir this couple up to be mighty in the kingdom. And I know she can preach. Oh, yeah. She oh, yeah. can preach. Women can preach. She's anointed. She passed like, oh, i got to take a week off of vacation. I can preach. I can minister. Yes. Stir up the prophetic in yes. her in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. Amen. Is that good? Right. Amen. Give her a hand. <laughs> what pastor would you do without this couple right here? What would you do? They are great. Amen. Next verse, 3. For I know my transgression and my sin is always before me. Now, many of you don't know their sins because they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, the Bible says 
in Hebrews, my spirit is perfect, but my soul, man, it's got a problem. How many got a flesh? I thought it was dead. It just got resurrected. Right? When I get on planes and they're late, everybody's going like, ah, oh, not a big deal because they don't have a life. I have a life. How dare you be late when I'm flying? Unbelievable. Shame on you. Right? So we all got a soul man. Okay? And, and we know our sins are before us. Because how many of God won't let it, he won't let you be, will he? Let it be, let it be. No, no, not going to let it be. I'm going to bother you until you repent. <laughs> let me give you an example. How many here have ever had somebody rip you off? I've calculated that I know of, Pastor, that I know of $875,000 wow. in my life. That's more than some people earn a year. Really. <laughs> Can you imagine being ripped off 875000 and about three hundred fifty from one person? One person. A relative. In-law. Not my family. Thank you. And I remember she ripped me off a couple... $270,000 and I had four hours to come up with $270,000 or they're going to shut down our orphanage. She took out a loan against her property, never paid it, came due. <coughs> I had to come up with all that money. For a month, I said, God, I will never forgive her. Don't ask me. La, 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 la. I will worship you. I will not <laughs> forgive her. Ever. Don't even ask me. I'll do anything else you want me to do. I would not forgive her. She doesn't deserve it. She stole money from orphans. I'm so mad at her. And God gives you grace. How many can say Hallelujah. For about a month. One day I'm in my hometown preaching. And how many here have ever had the Holy Ghost speak to you? Yeah. Okay. You've had one month. Obviously you're not going to change. You stubborn little human. And here's what he told me. You ready? He said this. I'm going to pull your prophetic anointing until you forgive her. Do you know what it's like to prophesy over people when God doesn't help you? I see. Nothing. Because I need to forgive. Do you know what it's like to argue with God while you're preaching for him? God is good. No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Right? And he just kept pressuring me. Fine. I. For her. Give her. I have to forgive her every day. I'm so mad at her. <laughs> every day. And our sin is always before us until you confess it. You can only do it for so long. And you know what? One day, we don't... And if God stops bothering you, that's really not a good sign. If you can keep doing the same sin over and over again, oh, it used to bother me, but it doesn't anymore. Exactly. They call it, write this down, searing your conscience. You keep burning it and burning it, pretty soon it doesn't have any feeling anymore. Pretty soon it doesn't bother you anymore. I tell you this. I'm going to tell you this right now. Um, I always say, oh, I'm, uh, I'm afraid you might steal money from orphans. I said, no, I don't steal money from orphans. That's a temptation. I'm not tempted to drink alcohol. I think it tastes horrible. I'm tempted to drink smoothies and chocolate milk and go to Dairy Queen and have like five Dairy Queen something. <laughs> that's what doesn't even interest me. But, but n not forgiving people, that's a hard one for me. I can't hear you. For me, it's hard. Maybe not for you. Because I try to treat people right, and when they don't treat me right, it's hard to forgive them because I'm treating you right. Why don't you treat me right? And yet that's the thing that God keeps working on me and working on me and working on me and working on me. You need to forgive fast. Yes. How, many, how many wives have ever had your husband do something wrong at least once? Mm -hmm. It is amazing how close to the edge of the bed you can sleep when you're mad at each other. <laughs> don't touch me, Satan! <laughs> One lady came to church and said, Ma'am, you got your ring on the wrong finger. She said, I know, I married the wrong guy. <laughs> right? Now, and I talked to Pastor about this before the meeting. Forgiveness doesn't mean you let people keep screwing you over. You can't hear you? It hurts when you do this to me. Well, then don't do that again. <laughs> right? However, um, we need to forgive so we can be forgiven. So the faster you forgive, why, I mean, especially when you're married. Like, I can be mad at like, the other day. Oh, oh, my wife's supposed to come home, and then she had more to do in Peru, and I'm a little bit upset. Like, okay, fine, I just won't talk to you until you come back home. And God said, I, I, you're acting like a five-year-old. You're supposed to be in the ministry. You're 57, you're acting like a five-year-old kid. You're manipulating. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. Okay, I am. You know what I mean? And so, and so it's just like, and we try to manipulate and try to 
pushed each other rather than just going like, let's just walk in love. So I said, you know what? I know you got stuff you got to do in the country. I wish you were home right now. I really miss you, but you know what? I trust you. You're a good woman of God. Get your stuff done. Come as soon as you can. Hallelujah. And let it go. A lot of us, we hold, we hold on to it. Yeah. Nice little unforgiveness. I love you. You're so nice. Be my friend. Let's be friends forever and ever. Amen. Well, we need to let it go so God can forgive us. Amen. Yes. Does that make sense? All right. So we're going to pray. And um, I'm going to stand up, young lady, in the oh, pink. Not a color, dude. Maybe it's a peach. I don't know. I get her colors. All right. Who's going to come stand by her? Sorry. Sorry, nurse. Okay. There you go. And um, here you go. And so what I like about the fact is, hey, I'm going forward. I'm going to be a woman of God. I'm going to do what's right. I've got a great mom as an example on how to, how to love kids. And that baby's going to be an incredible blessing. And so, God, we thank you that she's not going to walk in shame or hide it or feel like I'm just a dummy, I'm a loser. How come a lady can get pregnant and nobody blames a guy? They're like, what's wrong? What would you do wrong? What about the guy? It kind of takes two to make it happen, right? And so, you know, the thing is, you repent, but you know what? Some of the greatest preachers in the world were conceived, maybe not the most biblical way. But that doesn't mean they're going to be cursed. See, the nice thing is, that, that child's going to have, you already got a built-in dad because you got, you got James there. So I'm going to encourage you not to move out of the home. I'm going to encourage you to stay in that home. And, you know, you might have a sibling who's like, oh, another kid in the house crying. Ah! Oops, I wonder who that might be. Hey, I saw you smile tonight. That was my goal. Yeah, there you go. Do you have teeth? No, you don't. And, oh, they're crying. They can't sleep. But you know what? Watch her hold the baby like, oh, I love you. No, I don't. <laughs> and so, yeah, we just thank you that, that I'm not preaching this sermon just because you're here. I'm preaching it because we all need forgiveness. Amen. I need forgiveness. Amen. Okay? You, you, people see me at my best, but you ever see me sometimes on, on, on the airport and people are walking really slow and I feel like running them over. Like, <laughs> uh, you stupid. Get out of my way. I'm, I'm in the airport. You don't matter. No. I mean, I mean, we all have problems. And there's some people we can see it better. And so, Father, we pray that, yeah, you don't want to do it again. But what we want to do is do the right thing. And you did the right thing by having the baby. And we just honor that. And yeah, we don't agree with how God started, but we do agree the fact that you decided, I'm going to be a good mom. I'm going to be the yeah. best mom. Yeah. And you're going to marry a man, but this time, James has to approve. Mm. So obviously, you're not good at picking. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> I love you. What's your name again? No. James says, I'm going to kill you if you touch her again. I'll do that right now. So I pray the peace of God be upon her to be a woman of God in Jesus' name. Yeah, you might get a look and a sneer and different things. You know what? A lot of times, they're not. They just ate something weird. So just assume the best from people and you'll probably be pretty much right on. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And so can't wait to see your baby. I hope I can dedicate the baby. Oh, great. James gets to do it. <laughs> Thanks, James. Oh, how many are happy you're here? Raise your hand. Could be worse. You could be living in Nebraska. I saw a book on tourism in Nebraska. It was one page. It said, welcome to Colorado. <laughs> that state's going to pot. <laughs> Mile High Stadium. Scooby Dooby Doo. What are they? <laughs> you say? <laughs> okay, stupid. Whatever. Sorry, I'm going to stop cracking jokes. Joe. If I can crank it up. <laughs> stop it. Okay. All right. Now, this is one of the <laughs> hard believe verses in the Bible. So, what was David's sin? What did he do? It was a Saturday night, and he ain't got nobody. In splish splash, he was taking a bath. Bath Sheba. She wasn't just a single hot chick. She was married. Oh, she's pregnant, and the guy's off to war. Let's do the math. Oh, that's not going to look good. Let's bring him home. He didn't sleep with her. Okay, this is not going to be good. Let's just have the guy go get killed. And... I mean, he didn't kill the guy, but he set him up so he did get killed. So really, he killed the guy. And yet, and this is the, this is the crazy. I just, I mean, I've read the script. I read the Bible through seven times, all the way through in Spanish, twenty-some times in English. And what, what, it says this: "Against you, you only have I sinned." I'm like, 
uh, what about Elijah, Bathsheba, the little baby that ended up dying because you know he messed around. And... So here's the thing: ultimately, it is against God that we sin. Can't hear you. When we sin against people, yeah, we sin against them. But we also sin against God. And I told guys this: I said, "You hurt God's little girl, he ain't gonna be happy." You're nasty to a little girl. Jesus said, if, if you're going to hurt a child, it would be better to go skydiving with a millstone around your neck. That's right, that's right. Kill yourself than hurt a child. Right. I can't hear you. Yeah. Well, I'm tempted to hurt a child. Okay, I have a gun. Um, try not to miss. You could be a holy man. <laughs> no, you didn't say, you didn't advocate suicide. Well, jumping off a cliff with a millstone... It's not a new sport. If at first you don't succeed, don't do skydiving. Okay, let's keep going here. All right. It's against you, sin, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Not only do I need to confess my sins to the person I did it to, I need to tell God I'm sorry. But how many know God forgives a lot better than people do? I write this down, there's consequences to sin. David lost a baby. He prayed, he sought God. It wasn't the baby's fault. So write this down. Innocent people suffer when we sin. Yeah. This is what is a painful thing. Because little children suffer. Christian people suffer. Because we sin. We don't. We all sin. It'd be nice though to hear, I'm sorry once in a while. Sometimes you'll never get that. But you know what? How many here have sinned? How many here have ever given somebody a dirty look because they're driving slow in your lane? But once a day, no. and, uh, right? We all got things to work on, do we not? All right, let's keep going here. That's the next point. Next point is this: Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Which is not a verse to argue original sin, but the point is this: is that even children are selfish. How many notice that? Ah! You're three. The whole plane doesn't need to hear you scream. So, by the way, do you want to get little children to stop crying? I tried this last week. It's very effective. Just cry with them. I was in this daycare. This kid's going, ah! I walked out with, ah! I back, ah! ah! I cried exactly the way this. The kid stopped crying and started laughing. I was just trying to communicate it. It was very effective. I'm not sure what age they have to be to get that to work, but you can try that sometime. Were you mocking them? I don't know. I was trying to talk to them. I was trying to relate to them. I was trying to get down to their level. That has nothing to do with my sermon. That kid really irritated me today. But anyway, so, uh, so you ever seen kids that are kind of selfish? Mm-hmm. Give me my toy! <laughs> Did you buy that toy? Did you go to Walmart and pay for that toy? It's my toy. It's not your toy. It's my toy. I bought it. And I will confiscate it. Give it to your little sister. Till you stop being nasty. Right? So, we all sinned. How many did some things that you wish you never would have done? How many confessed that one thing you did a long time ago? Many times. Um, we're going to write back about 43 years ago when I did that, you know, that one thing, Lord, that I hope you forgot, but in case you didn't, I'm going to talk about it again. How many went back to the same wrong thing you did at least 100 times? And one time God said, you know, you don't have to bring up anything that old. There's a whole lot of recent things you've done. So, <laughs> so it's easy to repent of something a long time ago. Ah, a long time ago. So, so write this down. Let's keep up to date with the things you need to repent of. Does that make sense? Right? I mean, how many didn't just mess up like 30 years? How many messed up like fairly recently at least once? At least once? It was just a thought like, I kill you. No. Uh, (laughs) Right? So I have these terrible thoughts when I'm at the airport. The slowest, dumbest people go to airports. I'm serious. They have like board meetings in the middle of the hallway. We were in the Atlanta airport, the busiest airport in the world, and you're having a family reunion in the hallway. It's 
excuse me. Oops, my bag hit you in the head. Oh, sorry about that, dummy. No. God is working on me. I don't have a lot of patience, but my wife's a medical doctor. She has a lot of patience. <laughs> she really does. Right? That was a good one. All right. So we're going to pray for someone. How about, let's pray for Angel. Angel here. So we come stand by her. And uh, <clears throat> ladies, are you a lady back there? Sorry. No pressure. Hurry up. <laughs> what are you doing back there? You got long arms. You can reach like four pews over and touch her. Yeah. Let's pray for Angel. And I pray you keep preaching. You love to preach. She loves to witness. She loves to share her faith. So I'll, I'll sit next to people in the plane like I did today. Oh, so where are you from? Mexico. And, of course, a lot of Hispanic people in the country. But Hispanic people, are, I'm, I meet them everywhere. I'm praying that wherever we go, that person is from Laos or Vietnam or whatever. And she can speak the language and share about Jesus, not Buddha, and what Christ has done. I'm looking for Angel to write a book someday. Here's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Here's what God has done. Do the miracles. I'm praying for signs and wonders. Give me your hands. Signs and wonders to come out of these hands. Lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover in Jesus' name. I pray for her to preach the gospel and lead lots of people to Christ. Isn't there some ministry in town, like G Jesus is Lord, or uh, King Jesus or something, and they're going to evangelize me? What is that? Team Jesus. That's it. God, I'd like to see her involved in that and win people to Christ and prophesy. I pray for God, sharp prophetic words. I'm praying for miracles to happen. People's like, wow, I feel better in the name of Jesus. She knows her authority in Christ. I thank you, Father, for her to travel around the world, not by herself, but in a team to share the gospel. Let her teach and speak with authority and anointing. God, I pray for her to speak in the lives of many women. You need to start a women's Bible study again at your house, in Jesus' name. Amen. At your house. Amen. Give her a hand. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Ah. It says this. But you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in the secret place. Wait a minute. He's talking about mercy, forgiveness. And all of a sudden he stops us. Look, wisdom is in the secret place. So write this down. How many here have made some mistakes in life? How many have learned from those mistakes? How many have embarrassed yourself at least once? Who's that? I don't know. It must be my other half. Right? Wisdom at times is learned the best when you've made mistakes. Boy, I shouldn't have done that. I should have lost. One time, I got so mad... I yelled so loud, I lost my voice. He goes, I got laryngitis. I said, no, I got lack of self-control. <laughs> of course, she did steal $270,000. I was a little bit justified. <laughs> but I learned next time, find another way to vent. Of course, how many here never really lose your, lose your temper? You're just venting. Just vent. I'm not I'm really sharing. I'm just venting. I'm not complaining. I'm venting. Everybody else is complaining, but I'm venting. You're inventing, you're inventing, I think. But anyway, so what have you learned from your mistakes? What things have you done wrong and you went, never going to do that again? What things have you said to your spouse like, that's not to bring that up again? Right? Have you learned yet some things? <laughs> After two years, have you learned what not to say? So does she like lose her voice or give you the silent treatment? What's her strategy? There you go. It's been over three weeks. You might want to try to figure out what's wrong. <laughs> you know you're mad at me. You ever talked to me for three weeks. But she can talk with her eyes. Have you noticed? Definitely. Don't say too much. You're going to get in trouble. So have you learned? Have you got wisdom from your mistakes? Has God allowed you to make mistakes? So write this down. You stay humble. So you don't look down at people because you know, you've made the same mistakes. How many of you can counsel people out of your own mistakes? <laughs> I'm doing this. Well, I can relate to that. I remember when I was young and dumb. How many here ever were young and dumb? Seriously, think of the dumbest thing. What's that quote by Einstein? That was a good quote. He handed it to me. I don't know where I put that one. Insanity? No, he said, he said something about 
What's that? Has limits, that's right. So, say it louder so I can hear you, please. The difference between stupidity and genius <coughs> is that genius has its limits. It's very deep, okay. Yeah. I thought it was great. Sorry, I didn't get much reaction here, but I thought it was great, Pastor. So, I was 24, I was young and dumb, and this guy walked him. His name is Scott Ledoux. Have you heard of Scott Ledoux? No. Really? What's he famous for? No. Well, you probably never heard of him, maybe. But Scott Ledoux is famous for fighting Muhammad Ali, heavyweight championship of the world. He's from Minnesota. And I saw him. He's probably in his 50s. And I looked at him and went, Scott Ledoux, you don't look that tough. <laughs> what an idiot. And he goes, bam, and punches me in the shoulder. Wham! My shoulder went back like this. <laughs> I laughed. <laughs> I can't feel nothing. <laughs> I couldn't feel nothing for about three weeks. <laughs> okay. But how do you think I felt inside? What? I felt good. Because I got hit by the same hand that hit Muhammad Ali and I was standing. <laughs> I couldn't feel nothing, but I was standing. The next time a guy walked in like that, I never repeated that same dumb mistake. <laughs> I'm like, I heard that went, what does that have to do with forgiveness right there in the middle of that? Ah, everybody say, ah. Ah. We can get wisdom in that secret place of repentance. Sorry, God. And then we can write this down, study what led us into that sin. What set us up. Ah. So it's one thing to do something wrong. It's another thing to keep on doing it. If you don't have what? Wisdom. All right. Let's keep going here. I love this chapter. This is a shocking scripture. Look at verse number eight. Let, us, let me hear joy. Say joy. Joy. And gladness. Say gladness. gladness. Now it's interesting because it goes on to say a little bit later on. Verse 12, restore to me the joy of your salvation. So write this down. In the midst of asking for forgiveness, write this down and expect to get joy. Isn't that crazy? I'm really sorry. I'm so happy. What's that song say? I'm so happy I could cry. Hello? That sounds like a woman. How many know women can laugh and cry at the same time? Is that true? How many know women? It makes sense, doesn't it? You know why a woman can laugh and cry at the same time? It makes sense because they have two sides of the brain that actually work at the same time. They laugh and cry because both sides of the brain is working. So men can't do that because only half our brain works. And half the time, it don't work either. Right? Some good preaching right there. You got to write that down. It's, it's, it's the key to marriage right there. <laughs> You're crazy. I go crazy. Look in your eyes. Okay, stop that stuff. Stop listening to serious next to Bring you backwards. Say joy. Joy. How many are glad that you're forgiven? Right. How many ever felt like, God, you did forgive me. Like, I'm happy. How many are happy if your wife ever forgives you? Okay, honey, I forgive you. Really? It's been three years. No, just kidding. No. And is joy in the presence of God? See, why, why do we have joy? Because when we repent, we come back in the presence of God, and we have joy. But God, I messed up. I know you did. I know you did. But you had messed up since you were baby. Right? And so, how many here have ever had someone kind of mad at you and I want to talk to you, and all of a sudden you reconcile? And you're friends again. Right? So, I, be, I pray that more times we start reconciling with people. Right? Because the devil, write this down. Devil divide. Divide right. devil. He can divide so easy. He's so good at it. Good friends become good become enemies. Spanish friend is amigo. Enemy is any amigo. Any amigo. See? Very close together. At odds with each other. We need to learn to get along. Say amen. So here we're going to practice. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. 
Don't look at me. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. I love you. Now look at another neighbor. Some different neighbor. Look around. Turn around. Look at a different neighbor. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. I love you. Some of you are not looking around. You're sitting sitting around looking around. I see my neighbor I don't like. (laughs) You jerk. I love you. God says so. Otherwise, I'd like to give it five-fold ministry. All right, say, I love you. How do you say in Spanish? If you're really romantic, you say, Te amo mi amor. If you're Italian, you'd say, Te amo, te amo mi amore. If you're French, you'd say, Je t'aime la If you're German, you'd say, Higlidic. <laughs> That'll kill the moment. If you're Arabic, you say, Silence, I kill you. I kill you. I kill you. Better keep going here before I cause a church split here. Okay. So say joy. Joy. Thank you, God, for forgiving me. Let's say that together. Thank you, God. For forgiving me. I got joy. Can you show me your teeth? If not, you can gumby me. You have some you still got teeth. That's a good sign. Okay, let's keep going. Hide your face from my sin and blot out all my iniquity. Amen. How many here remember the old-fashioned typewriter? How many ever typed right off that page? Kind of like, oh, that's like three paragraphs. Too late. How many typed a whole paper and made one mistake? You didn't space it, and you got to start all over. Remember those days? How many used the old-fashioned Wet blot out. Mm-hmm. Remember that? And I'm just in a hurry because I didn't have a lot of patience. And you type it into sin and it goes. Mm-hmm. Anybody remember that those days? Not before your time, before you were born. Anybody remember those days? Mm-hmm. You had to blot out all your mistakes. How many were didn't want, how many were so cheap that um, you didn't want to waste the paper, so you blotted out like 18 lines? <laughs> got to got to save my a 1.2 cent paper right there, right? Blotted it all out. All your mistakes are blotted out. How many can still see the letters behind that white stuff? That stuff didn't work. Yeah. Well, you know what? Sometimes people see the black stuff behind the blotted out. But how many are glad that God just blots the whole thing out? How many can say hallelujah? I think you did something wrong, but I can't remember. Sometimes we need a little Alzheimer's. How many can say, uh-huh? <laughs> I'm really mad at you, but I can't remember why. I guess I forgive you. I was invited to go to an Alzheimer's walkathon last month, but I forgot what time it started. The other day I told my wife I have an idea. She said, did it hurt? <laughs> Stop it. Quit laughing here. I see you smile. She smiled. It's America. <laughs> you have teeth. You white teeth. Don't smile around boys. They might like you. Give those ugly looks to boys. Oh, I hate you. I'm a girl. <laughs> Stop it. Don't smile again. Two times in the service is not good. You mean, you mean you might she did it twice. Oh my gosh. All, all things are possible. I hate that guy. I hate that guy. <laughs> okay. I used to have people do that to me, I used to hate it. All right, do it to others. <laughs> do to them what I hate what they did to me. Oh my god, stop me. Okay. I'm having too I didn't get enough sleep today, that's something too weird. Okay, I see the hand in the back. Oh, that means you want to get prayed for. Come up here, buddy. I thought, oh, get me, man. I want a prayer, please. Say a little prayer for me. <coughs> Forever. Okay. All right, you're going to stand back. Come on, guys. Have you, is your daughter going to come up and pray with you, too? Oh! Yeah, I, know. I, know how to, I know how to butter bread. I was a chef. <laughs> now, if I was a pastor, if I was a pastor, <laughs> I, sorry, stop this. Okay. I would have this guy on my board and my team. He's got your back. He's got your heart. The devil comes in to steal people. Thank God this man is rising up to the occasion. Now I just, a well, pastor, can I do something for you? It's like, I can help the pastor. And you can find ways to help him and to be that blessing. He has a spirit of excellence. He loves his wife. They have so much fun together, it's almost sinful. <laughs> so God, I thank you for the wisdom and knowledge. I'm praying for not a pay cut. I'm praying for a pay increase. I'm praying for him to make more money he's ever made before. Retirement, some more time to serve God. I pray God to help his wife get that CD out. She is such a good musician. He did a great, she did a great job on the bass guitar. God, let them work together as a team and pray together and do counseling and marriage for people. 
Sometimes people just don't want to go to a pastor. They're like, oh, they know my fault. I can't go to the church. But they might go to somebody in the church, like, like this man here. Thank God, Father God, this man has the wisdom of Solomon. I pray for financial opportunities that he can only... Wow, wow God, you open that up. You open the door that no man can close. Keep his stomach from pain. Keep his back from pain. Keep him supernaturally healthy in Jesus' name. Think about an exercise program. Working out, staying in shape. We want him to live long on the planet in the name of Jesus. Keep him from disease and sickness. I pray, Father God, for him and his wife to pray together and rejoice together. For God has put them together. It was a miracle you got together. It's a miracle that you stayed together. Hallelujah. All to the glory of God. He's a sensitive man. He loves his wife. He's a great listener in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're the real deal, man. Amen. He'd be a great elder or deacon in the church, Pastor. He really would. No pressure. <laughs> Yesterday, my dog sat on sandpaper. I said, how you doing? Rough. <laughs> That's a great joke. I love that joke, too. <laughs> Did I need that comment from you? I guess I have, <laughs> do I have to practice forgiving him. Fine. Okay, let's stop. The, stop that. Okay. Next key, okay, right, verse ten. Great song by Keith Green. Created me a clean heart. God, that the Creator who created the universe can give you a clean heart. Created me. Our hearts can get dirty. Our hearts can get filthy. Our hearts can get bitter. Our hearts can get angry. Our hearts can be greedy or lustful. But God can create in us a clean heart. Amen. Yes. Now, my nickname growing up, this might surprise some of you, my nickname growing up was Tightwad Tom. <laughs> that was my nickname. And I would buy presents for my little brothers and sisters, things that I like, and when it wouldn't work anymore, I'd let them play with it. <laughs> and I was Mr. Cheapo. Amen? And, and there's a lot of reasons for that. We, we were kind of poor. And I had high water. Remember high waters? People say you're waiting for a flood. I was like seventh grade. I said, no, why do you say that? Look at your pants. Oh, I said, I'm getting taller, shorty. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I was cheap. Well, uh, for Christmas, you know, I don't get to go with my extended family because I have too many kids. And I'd rather give presents to my orphans than give presents to a bunch of rich kids. And my siblings are pretty wealthy. And so they think I'm cheap. So my son, years ago, had a brain tumor. Some of you remember that. And after surgery, uh, he came out and he was alive. And there's a percent chance he might not make it. But God helped him get through that. And they thought it was like a revival meeting. Hallelujah, praise God, he's alive, and etc. And I said to my about 35 people, I'm buying pizza for everybody. And my brother went, because oh. <laughs> he had tightwad Tom still. And so when I bought pizza and I took him aside, how many have family members that don't want to know what you're doing? Like, oh, I said, how's it going? Great. How's it been? Great. Blah, blah, blah. Not one word about me. Okay, well, I'm glad you're interested. Not one thing, not even one question, because they know they might get a sermon. <laughs> so they don't ask nothing. Have you may experience that? And so I took him aside. I said, yeah, I know you don't know me very well, because you never ask me any questions. You probably don't get my newsletter. I said, I don't want to brag, but we give away about a million dollars a year away, which is probably more than you earn. And I'm not tight or cheap. I just don't, give it, I just don't buy stuff for your kids, because you're rich. So that offends you. Sorry about that, but... It's just the way it is. But I went from being tightwad Tom to, to be able to help. We've given away over $10 million the last eight years. That's more than some people earn. And still people complain about that I should give more. But the point is this, is that God can cleanse you. Write this down. Write this down. And he can take your weakness and make it your strength. How many can say amen? amen? I'm not a patient person. I admit that. I'm on the plane. I'm the first guys out. Ding! I'm up. And I'm traveling with my wife to Honduras. We're early, and she's about five rows back. I'm not in a hurry for once, because i got to wait for her anyway. Ding! 
guy next to me, probably about 300 and some pounds, about 75 years old, can't seem to get out of his seat. I'm not in a hurry. He looks up at me and says, what are you looking at me for? All right. And the whole plane is staring at me. Why don't you help me? I went, okay, what do you want me to do? Wipe that smirk off your face. <laughs> this is like my normal face. Like, <laughs> that's a smirk. Okay. That was my little blue guy with the little smirks. <laughs> <laughs> that's a new one. I could use that next time. <laughs> Thanks for laughing, James. Appreciate that, buddy. And, uh, and his wife said, Sit down and shut up, Frank. <laughs> that was my cue to get going. And Tony went, There's like 80 rows of people <coughs> staring at me. I'm getting like, Wait for the morning. What's going on up there? So I get off the plane. As I get up, he says to me, As loud as he can, Just go to the bathroom. That's great advice. I appreciate that. I haven't thought about that for four years. I should probably do that. Okay. But the worst thing is, Pastor Nate, I had to sit and wait for everybody to get off the plane until my wife got out. So all these people are looking at me like, going like, I want to die. I want to disappear. I want to be Casper, the friendly ghost. And I went, this, but five people watched him and said, you had amazing self-control. We were impressed. They went, thank you. <laughs> wow, dude, pretty amazing. No problem. I passed the test first time in 54 years. No shit. <laughs> so, anyway, does anybody else besides me got a little things to work on just a little bit? Amen. How many are sitting next to someone that really did? God needs to work on them, man? Like, dude, God seriously needs to work on you. You are seriously a loser. I mean, no offense, Charlie Brown. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just going to give you one more point here. I'm having too much fun. Stop it. Okay. Hey, by the way, great video. Bob Newhart, Stop It. Oh, yeah. Have you seen that one? Every minister has to watch that video. It's very Christian. Bob Newhart, Stop It. Okay. <laughs> right. Next, last point is this. Do not cast me away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. This last. This is probably the worst thing about when you like mess up. How many here have ever grieved the Holy Spirit? Like, you know, maybe I went a little bit too far. Is there anybody here that's kind of opinionated just a little? Anybody married to someone that's really opinionated? Well, I have an opinion. I know it's got to be right because it's my opinion. And I was next to a pastor. We're going to the airport. Randomly, he says, the number one problem in East St. Louis. How many have been to East St. Louis? It's the armpit of Missouri. Or no, actually, Illinois. Sorry. Nobody claims it, really. I mean, it's the number one problem in East St. Louis is guns. Guns are killing people every day. Guns are ruining East St. Louis. <laughs> Who cares? But me? No. I have to share my opinion. I went, you really think guns are killing people? People kill I said, well, then let's get rid of all the knives, because they kill people. But then how are you going to cut your steak? <laughs> you can't have a piano in church, because they take piano wire and get ahead in life. Yeah. So let's get rid of all the pianos. Of course, I'm still being stupid. I'm just keeping on going. Can't stop. Hands kill people. Let's cut off everybody's hands. <laughs> and he went, but then we could nub them to death. Ooh, ooh. It was the quietest trip to the airport I've ever had with a pastor. He didn't say one word, didn't say goodbye, didn't say thank you. I got on the plane. Lord said, let's have a little talk. What difference does it make? He thinks guns kill people. We all know that Charles Heston played God in Ten Commandments. We know that's... I'm just kidding. No, oh, sorry. Is it in the head of the NRA? And... See, write this down. You can be right and not righteous. Uh huh. You can be right and not righteous. And I can do the last little embarrassing story. You ever had one of those? How many have the Hall of Shame? Let me give you an example. I'm putting gas in my car, it's cold out. 
it's three in the morning. I gotta catch a flight at five. The guy's not turning it on. I'm gonna like push, push. You have to have a degree in gasology to turn on the pump sometimes. Yeah. Uh freezing, I gotta get home. It's not working. It doesn't say prepay. I go into like, uh, why is it not working? Because your license plate is different and you gotta prepay. I said, well, why didn't you tell me? And I got mad and I flipped him a twenty like this. And I went home. Ha <laughs> ha. That guy was a jerk. I'm looking around. I can't find my offering check. Because when I took it out like this, there went the offering check. Do mm -hmm. you know how embarrassing it was to call them up and say, remember the guy that threw the 20 at you? Did a check come out too from a church? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. I want to die. <laughs> you know how embarrassing that was? Yeah. Remember I talked about how we learned? Because a short time later, not working. I got a five hour drive. I'm about ready to blow up. And I'm like, don't do it. Don't do it. I'm like, mad. I walk in there, the guy goes, Tom Stammon, how are you? <laughs> Great! Hey, your things are. Oh, it's going to the bathroom. How dare you do that when I'm at the no, whatever. Thank God I learned how to make it say hallelujah. Amen. So as we conclude right now, please learn from your stupidity. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Was this sermon okay? Amen. I kind of enjoyed it. Did you? Yeah. I might appreciate it again at myself on the way home today. <laughs> All right, we're going to pray for one other person, and then we're going to wrap up this part. Uh, get ready to show the PowerPoint number, slide 50. Uh, young lady in the back, sit next to James. And everybody come stand by you. And guys and girls, this one here. I won't share any details, but we're just, I was going to get around the area. Here's what, here's what, here's what God's going to do. Look at me. He's going to take, which would be naturally shameful and painful and turn it into honor. Because most people cannot make it through what you're going through. They, 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 they don't make it through. But you're going to make it through. And here's what the Lord is telling me. Don't ever hang your head. Don't ever drop your chin. For those who know her and know the story and the situation, if you're ever ready to go, hey, you look nice. It's going to thump the chin. <laughs> You have nothing to be ashamed of. Right. This church stands with you. This church bleeds with you. This is when the church is at its best. When a person is beat down and hurt, and they think they're going to get rocks thrown at them. You need no rocks. Nobody needs to get rocks thrown at them. If so, um, he was all sit and cast the first stone. We all can stand in that circle and be stone. You're going to come here and feel loved, and you're going to love people. It's going to be as if it never hurts you, and you're constantly instead of bringing healing to the person who really needs to be healed. And you're not going to take the pain except for their pain. Nothing for your pain, their pain. And God, I pray for victory. I pray for this seems impossible, something good to come out of it in Jesus' name. I pray for joy. I should be... No, we just read the joy of your salvation. We're saved. We're going forward. You're going to help the person we know to get better in Jesus' name. Because you think you feel this way, that person feels way worse than you do. But you're going to walk the person through it, and you're going to study, and find scriptures, and words of encouragement, and, and et cetera, et cetera. And you're going to come across many people that feel exactly the way you do. You're like, I, I could have felt that way, but no blame, no shame, I take aim to serve the Lord Jesus. I'm taking aim. I'm going to make the devil suffer the way I suffered. He's going to suffer worse. Let me give you a great quote from the defense minister of Israel. He said to Iran, you rain on us, we'll flood on you. You about that quote? And you're going to say that to the devil. You rain on my parade, I flood on yours. I'm going to be more committed, more loving. And I'm not going to sit in the back row. I'm not going to hang my head. I'm not going to feel embarrassed. Somebody asks a question, where's blah, 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 blah. 
I'm not going to hang my head. You're going to hang your head high. Amen? Because you're a child of the living God. You get healed. Because the faster you get healed, the faster the whole family's going to heal. You're not going to pretend it didn't happen. You're not going to hide it. You're like, you know, we deal with it. But you know what? We do not work and in guilt and blame. We're righteous before God. And there's great victory coming. Not that you blow it over and you don't have compassion. You just walk in freedom. In Jesus' name, amen. No shame, no blame. Take aim. Let's give her a hand in Jesus' name. Amen. That's it. Okay. All right. Everybody, after you're seated, bow your heads and shut your eyes. Are you ready to meet Jesus? God doesn't want anybody here to go to hell. God wants everybody here to go to heaven. But you need to give your life to Jesus. I'm going to give you an opportunity in the count of three to give your life to Jesus. If you need to do that. Don't go to hell when you can go to heaven. If you need to give your life to Jesus in the count of three. I want you to raise your hand as high as you can. You need God's forgiveness? Raise your hand as high as you can and give your life to Jesus. We all need it, friends. If you need to give your life to Christ. Raise your hand as high as you can on the count of three. One, two, three. Raise your hand to give your life to Jesus. Those hands going up. High as you can. Let me count the hands. One, two, three, four. Awesome hands. You can drop your hands. Put your hands on your heart. Everybody pray this prayer. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Save me. Save me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Come in my heart. Come in my heart. Wash, away my Wash away my sins. I believe in Jesus. I believe Jesus. Jesus, is Lord. Jesus is Lord. He died for me died. and rose from the dead. And he's coming again. Thank you, Jesus, for eternal life by faith and grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Say, thank God for his mercy. Lord, have mercy. Especially on you. I mean, okay. Remember years ago we had a preacher to sing, Amazing Grace, how sweet the psalm that saved a wretch like you. <laughs> no, just kidding. Well, actually, just a little bit of a PowerPoint. Uh, for those who have seen this before, we have some new uh, photos this time. And then we're going to walk through a new video we came out with. So we're excited about that. So try not to leave. And uh, here we go. Um, wanna maybe cut the lights. This would be great. Um, this is our um, center that my friend built. This is Dr. Tim. He beat me in wrestling twice in high school. I forgave him, and he built me this building. Next. In that building, there are five rooms. Next. Tap it. Tap it. Oh, sorry. For the rapture, please. Tap it. There. That's no, no. No. There. There. No, that's the same picture. Oh, there we go. There we go. I've got it. Rapture almost came. So we have a full-size workout gym. Our kids are getting pumped up. Next. We also have a rec center so kids don't wreck things. Next. How many of you ever have been to Iowa? How many of you know where Sioux City, Iowa is? Yeah. That is their wrestling mat. Wow. And so, how many of you ever heard of soaking services? Yeah. Where they'll sing and pray. That's what they're doing right now down in Honduras, Friday night. And God is moving in revival. Pretty exciting. Next. We have security walls. So if you go on a mission trip to Honduras, it is safe. You try to come across our walls, you're going to be a holy man. <laughs> the angel's name Smith and... Nice. Next. We have the only medical clinic for 20,000 people. Next. And we have two soccer fields. Next. Does anybody remember the number one all-time scorer for us? Be Mrs. Stamen. It'd be my wife. Very good. Next. We play volleyball. Amen. We don't just play soccer. Hallelujah. I love playing because my team wins almost every time. And the kids say, you're hitting it too hard. I went, I know. That's why we win. <laughs> Sorry, I'm competitive. Next. <laughs> We play basketball. The kids are getting good at it. They ever learn to stop double dribbling. We also have we also use it for corn drying. Oh shucks. Next. I have a chapel in the mountains for preaching. Next. And next. This is our hotel. This is important because many women say, I'm never going on a mission trip. We designed it for the woman who said, I will never go on a mission trip. Uh, we had a Sarah Palin's church in March. How many heard of Mike Huckabee? Wow. And John Bevere. Their church came down in March. How many of you ever heard of IHOP in Kansas City? Mm -hmm. Great pancake place. No. Um, their head evangelist came down in February. Next. We designed it for the woman who said, I'll never go. Uh, some of you have seen this before. This is our baptismal tank. 
70 feet long and 40 feet wide, you can get sprinkled, dunked, or water slided. We allow any orphanage in the nation comes for a day of play. And so we share it with the orphans are very poor. They come and they find Jesus. Amen. Next. This is our second pool. We want to do Olympic sports. The kids are learning how to swim. We thought about doing bobsledding, but it hasn't snowed in 10,000 years. Next. This is Missionary House. Next. This is a 200-bed dormitory. This is the largest orphanage building in Honduras. Next. We're getting ready to put in the ceiling. The flooring is done next. There's a big project next. This is our new beauty shop. Now, we already have a welding shop. We have a furniture shop. And people have said, um, what do you have when your kids graduate? They're going to have trades. What are girls going to do? They're learning how to do hair and makeup and fingernails. Next to that is a clothing store. Excuse me. And we have a clothing store. Our kids are learning how to sew clothes. People have accused me of starting a sweatshop. Unbelievable. Because we have air conditioning. Next. <laughs> We have a full-size mechanical shop. It's bigger than this church. All our vehicles are there. <laughs> Getting fixed. Next. We have a, we have a full-size butcher shop, 2,000 square feet. My wife. How many met my wife? Little Teresa, little cute little hands. Mama Teresa. Mama Teresa. She's lear she learned and started butchering chickens and a pig. She said, don't ever mess up. I'll forgive you, but I know how to butcher. Next. We have a grocery store, a restaurant, and a bakery next. So there's 20,000 people. We have 90 people work for us. We have an apartment complex we built for poor people next. We're getting ready this month, finally, to put on the roof to our tractor shed next. This is our music and art room next. How many people know Art Heals Kids? Next. We have a full-size art room. A year ago, we had two instruments. We now have 57 instruments. Our kids are learning how to do worship. A year ago, they didn't even sing. Now they do the worship. Next. This is one of the boys playing the violin. Next. This is a multi-purpose Bible camp building. Next. It'll see about 800 people. I just need $250,000. Make your checks out to IMI. Just kidding. Next. We have the only dentist chair for 20,000 people. Next. And this is our future hospital. Next. And next. This is Maria. There's a pedophile released in the neighborhood, and he's abusing little kids. And so five kids moved into our orphanage to be protected. Next. These are, we have three families that now live in our apartment complex. They're living in the dumps. They're living in poverty. Now they have a new home. Next. These are our kids in our school. Aren't they cute? Next. These are the kids in the neighborhood that go to our school and our teachers. Next. These are some of our employees. Next. And that guy needs some counseling. Which one? <laughs> Thanks, Pete. No, keep, no, don't go backwards. <laughs> That's just a joke. You have to, yeah, don't, don't get stuck on that one. So this is what our place looked like in 08. So people say, well, where's your money going? Next. Oh, there it is. We just finished, <laughs> just finished our uh, 57th building project. And the next uh, six, eight weeks, we'll be up to number 60. Next. This is our property. Uh, sex trafficking goes from Chicago all the way to Minneapolis and then down to Des Moines. They move the girls 20 minutes every two weeks. They put chips in their shoulders and arms. Sex trafficking girls, that's our property next. And that's the parsonage where our program director lives next. And this building is 22,000 square feet. The biggest safe house in Wisconsin. Five beds. We'll have 50 beds. We just had a team come in. They did our dining hall last week next. This is Belize. How many know where Belize is? Two countries south of the, of the United States. And we're building a day camp. I got saved at a Bible camp. So this is our multi-purpose sports building. Our sports place. We have all kinds of different sports there. And then we use that to preach the gospel. Next. This is our safe house we're going to be building. I was in a uh, place the other day. And a uh, guy has uh, 13 car dealerships. I walked in and says, Tom, what do you need? Uh, I know you need money. What do you need? So I want to build a safe house. I want to name it after one of your kids. He told his daughter to come in. He said, here's the check. It's going to be called the House of Kelly. So in three months, we'll have our first safe house in Belize. We're so excited. We're singing Belize Navidad. <laughs> hey, I'm a Belizer now. Next. Okay, next. Oh, that's it. Okay, so let's go and share that 
video, this is brand new. None of you have seen this. It's only three minutes long, but it talks about a little bit what we're doing down Hunters and why you should go on a mission trip. So, nope, that's not it. That's a good song, though. That's not it either. Great church. That sound's not working. So, here they are. They're walking through our mountains. This is where one of our kids grew up in. Go back a little bit, would you? Just a second. Go back a little bit, would you? Not that far back. It's the garbage dumps we get the kids. Caesar salad. light on please it was about five years ago um, we got a phone call and um, always says you're not going to want to see this you have to come one of the doctors a uh, hospital dogs running around hallways 
in back of the room, there's a little girl named Lixie. And her mom had burned her, burns all over her body. She used to stick their heads in pails of water to get them to stop crying. And I could, couldn't, the doctor said, just let this one die because she's not worth it. And my wife said she will live and not die. And so she had blood transfusions. We spent thousands of dollars. And um, her, those kids have recovered. They're like beautiful little angels. But the older sisters were traumatized because they still remember it. One is named Juvie. Uh, we've, we've had her for eight years. Uh, she's never one time said hi, doesn't take any hugs, avoids people. And this last week, God gave me a word of wisdom. Have her help you separate the toys I bring every month. And she talked and talked and talked and talked and got my first hug after eight years. Because her mom was a prostitute. You can only imagine what happened to her as a little girl. She traumatized her. But she's getting better. I'm going to know a child is a precious person. Say amen. So that's what we're all about is helping kids around the world. Whether it's in Belize, we have the only, we're building the only safe house in the biggest city. Not one safe house. We're it. And so if we don't have that, they keep getting abused. We're going to pass out an envelope. And ask some people can help me pass these out. Angel, you can help me. Peter, you can help me. And I encourage you to give the best you can around the world. Your money goes to help kids. And um, there's five ways you can give. I encourage everybody to give the best that you can give. We're helping change the world. One, 60 children, 100 children at a time. And there's five ways you can give. One is you can write a check to IMI. IMI. We're building a city from nothing. Give. Two, you can post date a check for two months. So if money's tight, just circle the date on your check. We'll hold it for two months. Option three, we take credit cards. We take Visa. We take MasterCard. We take American Express. We take Discover. Pretty simple. Just fill out the bottom part with your credit card. And then you get your tax deduction. Uh, you can give every month. I have told my children, you don't need to eat every day. And they just do not listen. I told our 90 employees, you do not need to get paid. You are Christian people. Why are you getting paid? They want to get paid. They don't. They take us to the government. <laughs> so, imagine having a payroll, 90 people at 500 bucks a month. What does that, what does that add up to be? 45000 a month. Okay, so, but it keeps 90 families working. So, um, and then if you want to give cash, put your name and address in there and give cash and give the best that you can. I encourage everybody to give the best you can and see what God's going to do. If your neighbor doesn't have any money, give them some money so they can give something. How about that? I'm going to have Pastor Nate, would you please pray, pray for the offering, Nathan? Appreciate that. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being able to sow into your kingdom. Yes, Lord. We know, Lord, that you've said that the son of the real children to come unto you. And also you said, Lord, that if we do it under the least of these, we do it under you. So, Father, we just sow this into you, knowing that you can minister Life, health, healing, and salvation most important. That's right. Most important. We know that you want to be real to them. This is our way of making you real to us as well. And we thank you for the privilege of being able to sow this into your kingdom. Thank you for the privilege of being able to sow into your I need some good looking people. There's one right there. Here's the other one. Go ahead and stick your envelope in there. Oh, before you do, write down, I love children. I love children on the envelope. Take a second. I love children. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much for giving to the kids. We appreciate that very much. Appreciate that. Um, would anybody here ever be interested in going on a mission trip? Anybody here? Okay. I'd love to take it have any heart to come. We've taken 2,000 people with us. It is very, very, very life-changing. We love, we love taking people. So, amen. All right. Thank you. Let's give a Pastor Nathan a hand for having sponsoring this meeting. We appreciate that. Yep, yep. Thank you so much for giving. We appreciate that, too. And uh, we're blessed, and we've got lots of powerful prayer people here tonight. Wow. we got a Holy Spirit buffet, smorgasbord, uh, all you can eat uh, prayer people here tonight so I encourage you to get prayed for uh, and so let me tell you who's available to do that uh, for sure uh, Pastor Nathan in the back raise your hand so we know who you are in case there's anybody that doesn't uh, you can pray for people uh, you want to pray for people James you and your bride pray for people you pray for healing 
I'm going to need you to pray for it tonight. My stomach hurts. And we have Brother David and Sister Patty, reverends, and they want to pray for people too, correct? They have a great healing ministry, so make sure you get prayed for. Is there any other ministers that are here that I didn't call out? Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, you guys are. Good. Okay. So they can pray as a team in the back. And slam the devil. Get people healed up. Amen. So if you're not feeling good, go home healed. I'm going to call people to pray for. And I'm um, so, so glad you came tonight. It was a good night. And God definitely is here. Yes, sir. Should you mention the t-shirts in the basement? Yes. Uh, yeah. My, my angel, she's my re retail expert. She'll go down there. So somebody already got a couple of hoodies, I think, too. So you got the coffee one. Get hoodies. got coffee, t-shirts, books, bags, uh, all kinds of stuff. That puts gas in my car. I drive or fly about uh, 260,000 miles a year. It gets really bad when you go to when you go to Honduras Airport, and I know all the workers. Hey, so, it's kind of fun. Anyway, let me call the people to pray for, it, and we're going to wrap it. Yes, Pastor. Uh, while you're ministering one on one, anybody that would like a glass of apple juice or uh, lemonade and cookie, whatever, just to kind of allow him the privacy to deal with people here. You can have a little snack and check out his uh, clothing and. Thank you. Yeah, good stuff. Thank you, Pastor. All right, let me give people numbers to pray for, and then we're going to wrap it up. Uh, number one, my friend John, I promise to pray for him first. He will be number one. Number two, I would pray for the Alexander Family Plus, will be number two. Uh, number three, I will get um, you guys up front here, number three. Please, number four. You're going to be number five. Uh, the man in the gray shirt. He almost looks like Pastor Hamlin, like you could be a brother or relative. That's blue. Ish. Thank you. Thanks for correcting me and embarrassing me in front of the whole church. <laughs> yeah. You're number six. I'm not going to say it three times. Yeah. Uh, you scare me. Never smart off before you get a prophecy. Just telling you that right now. <laughs> it might affect me, Lord. Help me not. <laughs> Seven in the back. We get our sister. I got your husband already. Uh, number eight. Let's get uh, anybody in that group back there, kind of part of the loggy team. We'll, have it, we'll log in. And, uh, and you'll be number 3.5. Okay, I guess. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so that's how that works. You get the snacks, come back up here. So let's make our way over here. We're going to start John's number one. 